Nandito na nga, nandito na nga, nandito na nga. Hello guys, we are now at week 6 of our IM102 Advanced Database System Selector. Now for our lecture today, we are going to talk about triggers. So when you say trigger, basically you can think of a gun. When you pull a trigger, what happens? A bullet releases from that gun. Or when you get angry, you get triggered. Okay. So trigger is a procedural SQL code that is automatically invoked by the um, database management system upon the occurrence of a given data manipulation event. It is useful to remember that a trigger is invoked before or after a data row is inserted, updated, or deleted. It is associated with the database table and can uh, database table can have one or more triggers. And a trigger is executed as part of the transaction that triggered it. They are critical to proper database operation and management. For example, they can be used to enforce constraint that cannot be enforced at the design and implementation levels. They add functionality by automating critical actions and providing appropriate warnings and suggestions for immediate action. In fact, one of the most common uses for triggers is to facilitate the enforcement of preferential integrity. Triggers can be used to update table values in certain records in other tables and call other start procedures. A trigger is created using the create trigger command. So we have an example here. Now, I've already prepared a student table for our MySQL and SQL server. So this is the sample structure of our table. Notice um, the code that we use here is print, which output or generate a particular message on the screen. However, our online compiler does not support that particular message. But I want to show you, okay, I want to show you how it will work when using um, the actual SQL Server Management Studio. Okay, now first we study the code. The first uh, that we need to do is to use the keyword create trigger followed by the trigger name. Notice um, I usually use prefix trg for triggers followed by on followed by the table name. So this is the table wherein our trigger will be placed. Next is for, followed by your operation. This could either be for insert or adding data, for update, for modifying data, or for delete, followed by the keyword as, and then you need to write your code. In this example, guys, I am declaring a variable so if you uh, will remember in uh, SQL Server, in the SQL, in order for us to declare a variable, we use the at symbol followed by the variable name. First, we use declare and then at symbol followed by the variable name followed by the data type. Okay. If you want to declare multiple variables, you can do that also. What you can do is to put a comma followed by the variable name, followed by the data type, or you could repeat declare again on the next line. So in this instance, we declared a variable called at new name, which is a bar chart having 100 characters. And then what we do is to put into variable at new name using select statement. So select at new name. Basically, this is a command that places a value to our variable at new name. So where will this value come from? The value will come from our table students. So select, and then what column do you want? So I will select name. We have the name column, and then from, and then instead of 
using the name of our table, which is student, we will use inserted. Why is this? Inserted is a special table wherein all of the newly inserted data are temporarily placed when you are using a figure. So all of your inserted data, all of our newly inserted data on table students, all the columns, as you can see here, name, num1, num2, num3, will be present inside the inserted table. So the inserted table re will represent your table students and then it will contain all the newly inserted data. After that, we will print the student plus once the value of new name is added. Okay. In order for us to test this out, because this will not display anything if we are to execute it using our online compiler, I will use the SQL Server Management Studio. Okay. We are now at our SQL Server Management Studio. So I created a database called Test. And in this example, we have already created the trigger. Okay. I will paste the code for the trigger. Okay. Okay, so this is our trigger. What I will do is to insert a value in table student. So insert into student and close parenthesis name. Then values to go, then try to see what will happen. Okay, notice the student dugong 13 is added, so it will display the value inserted into the student's table. That is how our trigger will work when using the SQL Server Management Studio. So let's take a look at the above example in detail. So I explain it to you one by one. Create trigger, then the trigger name on students. A new trigger object, trigger add student, should be attached or added to the student's table. Okay, so remember, create trigger, trigger name on table name. The next, for insert, the trigger will be fired when an insert command is executed on the student table. If we would like to handle the insert and update events, we would have to use for insert Okay, or for update. But if we want to handle both insert and update, we can do for insert, comma, update. Next, as declare at new name bar char 100. Select at new name is equals to select name from inserted. When the trigger is called, the queries after the ask keyword is executed. Select name from inserted. The SQL command retrieves the name field from the inserted table. The inserted table which contains all the values we inserted using the insert command. Similarly, for update and delete command, we can use inserted, update and insert, both use inserted table. So if we update, we also use the inserted table. But if we delete, we use the deleted table. Okay, always remember that for update and insert, we use the inserted table. For the delete command, we use the deleted table. Next, print the student plus new, add new name is added. 
prints the name selected from the inserted table. So we have an example here. Insert into student values. Okay, George Matthew. The student George Matthew is added. Note, the name of a trigger should follow the rules for identifiers. Okay, so trigger should start with the uh, letters. The create trigger must be the first statement in the batch. Triggers cannot be created on a view, temporary table, or system table, but they can reference views or temporary tables. We will learn about temporary tables later on, but uh, if you will remember, we have a sample about view. Views are uh, just representation of your table or multiple tables. So basically, view is just used for viewing data on your table. The system table should not be referenced in a trigger. Okay, it's the information schema views instead. So next example, we will use the following table structure. So we will create a table called table one having x id uh, integer primary key x name bar chart five hundred x call one and two decimal having 12 numbers and four decimal places. Now, let's try to use this one. Okay. So we will again be using, so again, we will be using our your server management studio so that you can see. Okay. okay. So this is an insert trigger for table underscore one. Okay. We have declared four variables at name, at ID, call one, and call two, which will um, get the values of our inserted table. To so select at name is equal to x name, at ID, x ID, call one, Call two is x call one x call two. Afterwards, we will print the name and the ID and the value of our inserted row. Okay. Cute. Okay, next we insert our data. Okay, notice Pinocchio has ID of 1 and a value of 1.3 and 69, 143 and 69. Okay. So that is how you would use or execute our trigger for SQL Server. Next example, we will use two table. So in this example, what happens is that if I add a data to table one, it will be automatically inserted into table two. So for this example, uh, I will have table two having these two columns, T name and T column or T call, having varchar 500 and then decimal 12, four. So let us try to Execute. Our code. Okay. 
Okay. So for this example, we will again be creating a trigger called trigger expand to uh, on table one. This is for insert. Okay. Then we declare two variables, name and call one. So we will insert the value of the newly inserted x call one and x name into name and call one. And then after that, we will insert the newly inserted name and call one value into table two. Okay. So let's try to run our code. Mamon has ID of 2 and value of 143.00 and 69. So the earlier trigger that we created earlier is still working. Okay. How about the trigger X men 2 that we created? So let's take a look. This is your trigger, x men and x men 2. So let's take a look if the data was passed on to table 2. Okay, so there you have your value. Again, if we test it, example. Boho. Okay, Boho has ID of 3. So let's take a look at table 2. Okay, so notice when we insert a data on table 1, because of our trigger, that is also inserted into table 2. Okay, let's take a look on how we can execute this on our online compiler so that you can see. For this instance, we will be only using um, trigger x men 2 because the other one just displays the value using print and we do not have support for print here. So we will just be um, using the Insert statement to trans uh, to copy our value from table one to table two. Just run trigger x men two. Okay. Next we execute our insert statement. Okay, so before we move on, I'd like to show you that table 2 has no values. Okay, so let us insert to table 1. Okay, and then let us select table 2. So there you have your data, Boho. Okay, next. To delete or remove a trigger, we use the drop trigger trigger name command. If you want to remove a particular trigger from your database or from your table, you just need to type drop trigger and then the trigger name. For example, I will drop trigger x men 2. So the next time that we add data, it should not be copied anymore to table 2. Okay, notice that pi was not copied because we have removed the trigger. Next for my SQL. The syntax for my SQL is okay, 
delimiter and then delimiter symbol. What is this delimiter all about? Delimiter is a symbol that you can use in order for you to tell MySQL that that is the end of your code. So usually we use delimiter if you are executing um, a code with long statements like let's say trigger, functions, or start procedure. Um, on the other hand, our online IDE does not support delimiter. However, I will show you a code on how we could use delimiter on an actual MySQL um, interface called Workbench. Okay. Next, after delimiter, we use a keyword create trigger followed by the trigger name. Okay, and then after that, we use either before or after okay meaning before an insertion happens or after an insertion happens um sql server only supports the after trigger it does not support the before trigger so in my sql you could do a particular action even before the data is added to your table okay after that, you could select either insert, update, and or delete, followed by on, followed by the table name. Okay. In our code, in order for us to loop inside all the changes, all the other data, modified data, or deleted data, we use the command for each row, which will, which will loop through all the the newly inserted or updated or deleted data followed by begin which states the start of your command and end which states the end of your command followed by the delimiter symbol that you declared earlier next is delimiter but this time it's semicolon semicolon is the default delimiter symbol of my sql okay Within the trigger body, in uh, SQL Server, we make use of inserted and deleted. In MySQL, we make use of the old and new keywords for us to access columns in the rows affected by the trigger. Old and new are my ex MySQL extension to triggers and they are not case sensitive. In an insert trigger, only new that column name can be used there is no old row in a delete trigger only old that column name can be used there is no new row in an update trigger you can use old that column name to refer to the column of a row before it is updated and new that column to refer to the column of the row after it is updated okay for an insert trigger if we want to get all the newly inserted data you call the new table if you are using a delete trigger if you want to access the deleted data you access the old table in an update trigger if you want to get the row before it is updated you use old and if we want if you want to go to the row after it is updated you use new a column name with old is read only. You can refer to it but not modify it. You can refer to a column name with new if you have the select privilege for it. In a before trigger, you can also change its value with set new column name is equals to value. This means you can use a trigger to modify the values to be inserted into a new row or use to update a row. Such as that statement has no effect in an after trigger because the row change will have already occurred. So if you use a before trigger, you could actually change the value that will go to the newly inserted or updated data. 
in a before trigger, the new value for an auto increment column is zero. Okay, not the sequence number that is generated automatically. So that is the difference. So in this example, we'll make use of um, two tables, table X and table Y. Okay. And then what will happen here is that we create a trigger called trigger x men 2 after insert. So this will execute after a new data is inserted on table x. And then for each row, begin, declare the name and the x ID. We set the value of name into the value of the newly inserted name. And then we insert into table Y the value of name for Y name. And for X ID, the value of the X ID. Okay, so notice we have inserted the trigger x men 2 code here from our lecture. However, take note, on our, in our online compiler, we should remove the delimiter as well as the symbol used for delimiter on our end syntax. Otherwise, it will produce error. Okay, so after doing that, we will now have a trigger. So let's check the contents of table Y. So that you can see. Okay, so we have one value prop. Then we will insert data in table X. Insert into table X. values Raymond okay done the code Okay, so the problem was I didn't declare XID as auto increment. So we modify our table in order for us to have an XID of auto increment and YID of auto increment. Next. Is we create again our trigger by that okay. we insert our data. There should be a Pikachu also in our table by having ID of 2, table X, having ID of 2. So that is how you would use trigger after insert on my SQL. Okay. So next example is a delete trigger. For SQL Server. So what happens here is that every time we delete a particular data, that data or all of the columns found in that row will be placed inside the deleted table. And then we can call whatever column that is. So in this example, any data that we delete 
from table 1 will be inserted into table 2. So let's try to execute this example. So let's break down the requirements in creating a delete trigger for a scale server. First is you need again to have the create trigger command followed by the trigger name, followed by the keyword on, followed by the table name. Then the keyword for and then our purpose is delete. So for delete followed by ask keyword and then we have here an optional begin and end. Okay, so this one will serve as our marker for the body of our trigger. So begin and end. So inside, we declare two variables, at name and at call. So at name is virtual with 100 characters. At call is decimal with 12 numbers and four decimal places. So it's very simple. We just select the at name and at call from the value of our deleted table. So select at name from deleted, select x call one from deleted. Okay. We could also try to write this code like this. Okay. Next, after we get the at name and at call one, we insert it into our table two. Okay, so let us run the trigger. Let's take a look at any data that we could delete from table one. So we will delete Boho. Lead from table one where set ID equal one. Okay, so select again our table one. So notice Boko is already deleted and on table two. It's, it states here the deleted data. Okay. How about for my SQL? What is the equivalent code for that one? So the structure is almost the same. So notice we have create trigger, trigger name, and then after. And then in this example, this is after delete, followed by the keyword on, followed by the table name. We also have the for each loop and then begin and end. Then inside begin and end is the body of our statement. We declare two variables, name and xid. Name is bar char and xid is integer. We set the value of name from the deleted table. So deleted table is represented by old dot followed by the column name. So x name. And then we have xid is equal to old dot xid. Then we insert the name and xid into the column of point name and xid. So let's try to execute this code. Again, this code is used for MySQL Workbench. If you are using our online compiler, we do not need the delimiter.
Okay. So let us select table X. So let's delete prop. Take a look at our table Y. Okay. So pop and Pikachu also. So let us. Maybe this equals to one. After doing that, let's take a look at table Y. So notice table Y has been inserted here because we have deleted prop from table X. The next, we have an update example. Okay. So again, it's the same structure. What we need to do is to change four. So we change it to update. Okay, we have name and column again. Then we get the name and column from inserted. Remember, in SQL Server, all our updated data will also be found in the inserted table. Okay, and then we will insert into table two the word updated followed by the name of um, the data that was updated. So for example, we will update x name pi. So let's take a look at the value of table two. Okay. A ball pie where X ID is equal to one. So we will change pie into apple pie. Check table two. Okay. Okay. I think we have an error. So let's check. Okay, guys. So unfortunately, upon checking, our online compiler um, does not seem to support the update trigger inserted table. So every time that we updated the data there is no data being um, placed inside the inserted table including the deleted table but um, i tried it using our um, sql server management studio so let us again run down on the code so first what i did was to put all the newly inserted or updated data from insert remember inserted is the newly updated data into name and call one and then all my old data will be placed or it's found in a deleted table will be placed in name b and call one b so this is the old data this is the new data 
okay so once we update it will tell me the new data and then the old data so updated old uh, new data from old data okay so what i did is alter trigger so i do not need to create this anymore just to modify the code using alter and then i will change our code our value of x name to bulba okay notice two tables were affected and then upon executing updated bulba from sam so sam was the old value and bulba is the new value so let us now check if we can run our update code for my sql if this will work properly the notice i use here old so this will pertain to the old data if you want to show the new data you could use new Let's try it. This will work. Okay. Let us check the values of table X so that we can update. Two Pikachu. A million. So, the table Y should show the old value, which is Pikachu. Pikachu. So let's double check. Let's try to update the code so that we show the old and the new. IDB. I will not use this one anymore. The name is new. Okay, and then one cut. And then we stay with state uh, new from okay. 
try this one will display the new value together with the old value Okay, let me check okay guys so a new problem with our editor appeared seems it was not accepting our alter command so what i did was to drop the trigger and then change the code again to create and then execute Okay. In this um, instance, what I did was to use both the old data and the uh, updated or the new data by putting it into underscore name B. Then uh, using concatenation, I concatenated new, what is the new value from and then the old value so that we can display what happened to the value. Okay, so for this one, we will stay last is the new value. Let us try to execute. Okay, then let us display table Y. Okay, so new toko from last day. So I think it's the old one is toko blaster should be the new. So again, let us read the code. Okay, change two variables. Familiar. Run our code. New Charmeleon from Blastoise. Okay. So we have another example here using table cake in table price for SQL server. If we name, it will just display the price of the cake. So another one is Or insert again this one will insert our newly inserted data into a new table called table foodies then we also have delete wherein we get the id of the deleted deleted uh, cake and then we we remove the deleted cake id from table hoodies just like cascade update okay so you could actually do an a cascade update here 
using triggers. Okay. What are types of triggers? Um, we have two types. We have the DML trigger, which executes when using insert, update, or delete. When modifying data in a table of our view, we also have what we call the DDL trigger, which we did not discuss. However, we could create a DDL trigger, which executes whenever there are changes in our database schema, such as create, alter, and swap. So that's it. That's our lecture for this week. Kindly try the examples. Again, if um, you encounter an error, if uh, alter does not work, you can try dropping and creating it again. And if still the you are experiencing issue with our triggers, if you have the option to use um, my SQL Workbench, which looks like this. Kindly use my SQL Workbench and SQL Server if you have that option. If not, um, try the other uh, online editors that I have uh, given previously. Maybe they uh, will work properly in Breaker. Okay, that's it, and good luck. Okay, guys, by the way, I forgot to tell you, um, if you want to export your code that you have created from our online editor um, into an SQL code or so that you could use it in another editor, what you could do is to click uh, so first select the database that you want, click export, and then SQL schema. It will download your code. Then afterward, what you could do is you could uh, actually open your code using Notepad or any editor. And then you could um, see all the objects found in your code. And let's say in this example, we have the table students, we have table X, we have the trigger here. Notice our trigger uses the limiter also in the code okay so that it will be easier for you if you want to move to another editor anyway that's it and goodbye